Welcome you all to the 10th webinar hosting by Civil Department Association Force of College of Engineering, Patanapura. Kindly raise your doubts regarding the topic in the video comment section and he will be and we will be sharing it with sir and he will clarify it at the end of this section. I'm glad to introduce the lecturer of this webinar, Engineer Chichu Khada Muhammad. Let me give you details about the resource person. Chichu Khada Muhammad is an experienced geographic information system professional and civil engineer holding a Master of Technology degree in remote sensing and GIS from National Institute of Technology, Karnataka and Bachelor of Technology in Civil Engineering from GKM College of Engineering, Kollam. He has a demonstrative history of working in geospatial field in various projects of government of Kerala, including World Bank aided water supply projects, if and construction projects. He is currently working as a GIS consultant and chartered. He has given several training in the field of remote sensing, GIS, and GPS. Now, let me welcome Sir to this webinar. Welcome, Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ishriya. Hope I am here, uh, audible. Am I audible? No. Hope I am audible. Anyway, good evening, audible, everyone. Audible, audible. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I first of all, I highly appreciate College of Engineering, Patanaburam, for organizing this uh, webinar series during this lockdown uh, time due to COVID. So uh, today I am taking this uh, webinar related to geospatial technology, its concepts, applications in civil engineering and career options. So I will be discussing may, mainly about uh, the field of civil engineering, geospatial technology used in the field of civil engineering. So let's start. So I have designed the webinar like uh, four sections. Like geo uh, concepts, application in civil engineering, area options, and uh, at last we can interact with the audience. So you now going to the concepts. So what is geospatial technology? That's the first question. So geospatial technology is something related to Earth uh, studies. Geo means Earth, and spatial means some surface above Earth. So uh, space. Space above Earth. So, geospatial technology deals with uh, Earth's surface and its uh, features. So, before going to geospatial technology, I will give uh, give a brief introduction about the importance of this technology and geography. So, geography is one of the basic human basics of human planning. The first civilizations appeared in locations where the geography was favorable to intensive agriculture. So information about geographical conditions is essential for human development and ge geospatial technologies is a term used to describe the range of modern tools contributing to the geographic mapping and analysis related to the earth. These technologies have been evolving in some form or other since the first maps were produced in the prehistoric times. So in the modern era, geospatial technologies have developed to an extent where in every aspect of human development, it can be applied. It refers to the equipments and technology used for uh, measuring or analyzing Earth's features and uh, the techniques used in geospatial technology are geographic information systems, uh, this uh, GIS, uh, remote sensing technologies and uh, GPS technologies. The, those collectively known as uh, geospatial technologies. So, actually, for a kick starting, I have written something uh, as an introduction. So, I'll start with the uh, details. Uh, now, in this figure, we can see uh, the earth at the center. And uh, the earth features are extracted using satellites or drones, and the extracted features. Uh, normally, we are getting it as images, some kind of images, we will uh, see it later. So, the analysis in geospatial technology, the analysis of those images or those outputs are, uh, uh, we are dealing with those outputs 
and uh, image classification is there and uh, photogrammetry is there so uh, nowadays for anything and everything relevant to earth or above earth surface or be below earth surface we can use geospatial technologies i will show you an example a recent example it's not related to civil engineering but it's related to our uh, recent covid this is who uh, covid map dashboard so we can see the map of uh, the spread of covid around our whole earth and in each country so the details can be taken from here this is a chloroplast map and uh, a bubble map can be seen so geospatial technology the, in the back end of this map uh, we are using geospatial technology so uh, i showed you just for an example so that's the importance of uh, geospatial technologies like in every aspects of human life nowadays we are using gis or gps or remote sensing in some form or other so this is uh, the satellite constellation above earth which captures the images or scans the earth throughout the day 24 by 7 and uh, a drone uh, for uh, finer capturing or aerial photogrammetry purposes we are using drones nowadays now geographic information system geographic information system is the major part of geospatial technologies and uh, it is a conceptualized framework that provides the ability to capture store manage and analyze spatial and geographic data so we are uh, we have to capture the earth features the details of earth surface or subsurface and it, it has to be stored in a database so uh, for analysis purpose or for querying purpose we have to manage it like uh, editing purposes are there and for uh, the final uh, after preparing the data we, we are analyzing it for various purposes so geographic data is captured stored and managed using gis software uh, it is a computer based tools which allows users to analyze spatial information make interactive queries so we can query what is in the neighborhood uh, what is uh, uh, near, near our uh, specific site if we are going to construct a building or we are going for some infrastructure work so we can uh, make some queries what is in the neighborhood what is in the region of this uh, our site and uh, this edit editing maps is another functionality this is a image which uh, simply shows the uses of gis so here the earth surface is captured and several images are shown here uh, the features are stored as layers in gis so here we can see the layers different layers uh, which are extracted from the surface and uh, this is a handheld gps device so uh, for capturing the data this gps device is used now for mapping purposes several softwares and computer softwares are used this uh, the features uh, earth features will be having some characteristics so the power of gis is the along with the spatial data we will be having some attribute data the characters are also stored in the database along with the spatial data so uh, this is a relational database pictorial representation of relational database and uh, so gis data is stored in a database for querying analyzing and the preparation of maps and uh, gis uses location intelligence to analyze the query and uh, real world scenarios like uh, location lens what is location intelligence nowadays even we open a website or uh, we are use, uh, downloading an application in our smartphones it will ask for location or uh, turn your gps on or uh, your location is off it will uh, or allow uh, location on 
like that we, we can see so every application every uh, website nowadays are uh, collecting our location for customizing the needs of users so location intelligence is the capacity to combine spatial data with other business data so gis in, is used in business purposes also nowadays i will come into the detail so in order to gain critical insights and make better decisions the geographic information system or uh, geospatial analysis is used for mainly planning and decision making purposes like uh, where to live where to build a uh, structure like that so uh, decision and optimize the important process and application so it will be saving time time and uh, money uh, so and uh, when saying location intelligence i should say uh, about uh, geo coordinates uh, geo coordinates is nothing but latitude and longitude but nowadays it can be used as an address uh, we are uh, using uh, applications like uh, somato google map etc and all the applications are using location intelligence geo, we are not giving your we are not entering any address in that application but even the food or uh the location we need to go we can easily uh, reach there so the food reaches our home uh, with simply the geo coordinate so gis uh, geo coordinate is a single line address we can in a simple terms we can define it like that a single line address which contains a latitude and longitude and xy data so special data are stored along with attributes in a tabular format here i i earlier i said this gis spatial data like a river or a road or a building uh, like uh, earth features are uh, stored in gis as spatial data so it will be associated with the attribute data and it will be working in the back end of the software or uh, analysis purposes and i will show you one map of elavalli panjayat this map uh, we have uh, when i was working in kwsa uh, we have prepared it for uh, pipeline distribution network mapping so here we can see the whole panjayat and i will give an introduction about the panjayat because i am using this as an example for some further uh, points so this is a lovely gp in uh, trishur district uh, world bank aided water supply scheme is being implemented here so uh, th there are two zones zone 1 and zone 2 and uh, this line in the middle is a railway line so uh, we can see a straight line this is a railway line the pipeline crosses the railway line actually and we can see the tank to the main tank the intake well etc in this map so with by seeing this uh, intake well i can know the intake well is situated in the south side of the panchayat but i don't know what type of well is this whether it is an open well whether it is, a, it is an uh, bore well or uh, the type of construction whether it is rcc or uh, like that rcc steening so here in G by G using gis this attribute data are stored in the back end like we are seeing this map but when i click here the feature info or attribute table will be opened so i can easily know this intake well features like longitude latitude local place name description which ward it is so number of households how many person are using or uh, in in the scheme so the type of steering rcc is there uh, what is the capacity of the pump installed so these kind of data are saved in the back end as attributes so for tank also we can know like that here uh, the name of tank is tank 2 lat long rcc it is an overhead storage reservoir and the uh, capacity of the tank we can see but uh, if we see a map like this we cannot know all these uh, details so th this is one of the features of uh, gis 
Uh, and uh, GAS uses vector and raster data sets for operations. Vector and data set means uh, raster data set is uh, something which is known as an image with a specific resolution. And vector data set is uh, containing points, lines, and polygon features. So with the same uh, map, I can show you what are they. Because uh, uh, the, this is the basic of GIS. So GIS uh, stores all data in layers. Here you can see layers and legend tanks, so it's other such landmark. These are the layers in GIS. I can uh, uncheck or check the tank. This uh, now we have unchecked all this uh, tank, so it's other assets like that. So if uh, I am going to uncheck this uh, sonar distribution line, road, river, canal, etc. And see, now this map, we see uh, so many points. They are uh, in the uh, south side, we can see intake well, main tank, and the north side, we can see tank two, and these are uh, landmarks of this panchayat. So these are point features saved in GIS as points, and each point will be having the attribute. So vector data sets will be having uh, attributes, and they are points and uh, and uh, one thing uh, when we say uh, regarding this is uh, one thing I should say is uh, here we can see a panchayat office and uh, actually the building will be having an area, it's not a point in the uh, surface of earth. So for uh, with respect to the scale of map, it will be shown as point or if we are drawing a cadastral map, the panchayat office, the building will be shown, in, uh, shown as a polygon. And uh, now I am going to uncheck this and uh, with these lines. So here we can see so many linear features like line features. There is a river in the east side. There are uh, these green lines are roads. These red lines are pipelines. And uh, the railway line is here. So uh, these are line features. And if I click the line features also, this distribution line, uh, 110 mm dia, we can see what type of material it is, PVC, and uh, we haven't given much details in this. So that is uh, line features. And uh, the next, next features is polygonal features. See, this, is, this polygon is having an area, the panchayat boundary and the zone boundary. These are polygonal features in GIS. So these are vector data formats. And uh, when saying about raster, if I open the base map, this is an image. Actually, there is no data. No information is available in the selected point because this is an image. So this will be having some pixels, some resolution. Uh, each pixel will be having a cell size cell value or uh, uh, cell, uh, for uh, definite analysis. So when I check all this, you can see the raster image, the uh, vector data sets, everything. And uh, this is a, uh, I should say, this is QGIS cloud map, uh, WebGIS map. Actually, now WebGIS uh, developing is happening uh, very fastly. So uh, I have uh, selected this image or this map for uh, giving an awareness about that. This WebGIS, QGIS cloud free map is uh, used for uh, this preparation of this map. So this is an open source software, QGIS. We will talk later about the softwares using in GIS. So here, uh, Another functionality is I can measure the distances if I want to know the length of this railway line. I can easily measure this. 
see some uh, five kilometers line is there and another functionality is print option from this cloud map we can print if i need uh, some a map of the distribution system and i don't want this landmarks and all so i can just uh, uncheck the this other research source distribution lane road uh, road side on one roads then canal side on one so i will uncheck that thing and i can print this from the online platform i will give a scale like 40000 and uh, dpa 150 so now the map is getting downloaded uh, we have uh, made all this uh, in the cloud platform so that from anywhere using the link of the map the uh, users can download uh, the, uh, the maps which they require uh, this is a simple gis map actually i am not going into uh, any complex Uh, analysis uh, detailing because uh, uh, because of time constraint so uh, just for uh, giving you an awareness about the functions of gis i am see the uh, now the map is downloaded and if i open that i see distribution network allowedly this this is distribution network are there there are no road canals or this thing the legend is there scale is there so every features of a map is there when i download this is in pdf format so uh, this is the use of gis okay now moving on to the next uh, section ah now this is a, a satellite image downloaded uh, from google earth for uh, the, we can see clearly see this railway line here and uh, this is a raster image you can see the fields here uh, buildings built up area here so river we can see the river here like that from a satellite this is remote sensing uh, technique and uh, this is a satellite image with uh, some google earth is having 15 meter to 30 meter resolution and G another capability of gis is 3d modeling 3D modeling is in early ages we use topo sheets for uh, fixing the alignment of highways or uh, designing a we civil engineers uh, usually use topo sheets uh, or contour maps for uh, an uh, alignment uh, fixing purposes and all uh, for knowing about the uh, topograph uh, topography of the uh, area so with the use of gis it is having 3d modeling capability and this is a map 3d map of uh, the panchayat i was working working so here we can see we will get a quick idea about the topography see this is uh, a peak known as chokramudi so this is a water supply scheme water supply schemes are uh, being implemented here so uh, by seeing this topography we can easily uh, analyze the situation of uh, why why uh, this area is water scarce or drinking water is scarce here so uh, see the, the, the steep slope uh, this is an area where heavy rainfall is available but uh, because of this steep slope uh, the rainfall Uh, uh, getting here available here is being uh, gone through to this reservoirs this is kalaruti reservoir so uh, because of the steep slope and uh, this valley portion this rainfall will be going uh, in a fast mode uh, to this rivers and uh, reservoirs so uh, groundwater recharging is not happening so uh, this is an example and uh, from this 3d also we can see the attribute of uh, the each scheme these blue dots are uh, sources of water supply scheme and these red dots are uh, uh, overhead tanks or tanks reservoirs 
so if i click here in the source the details of this uh, well or, or sources are available here in the in a tabular format these are the attributes of the wells and when i click this tank i can get the latitude longitude elevation and uh, this is a useful uh, purpose because uh, i know the elevation of because before designing the uh, water supply scheme in this uh, area i can know with this 3d map or with uh, gis map i can easily know the elevation without using a topographic sheet or a contour map i can easily uh, get the elevation of this area the, this is the site selected for uh, the well and uh, if the site is selected for this i can easily get the head difference and uh, design purposes it can be used and i will show you a video uh, regarding this something some technical error is there okay i'll uh, show you one video for uh, this 3d de detail model uh, for the alignment of proposed hill highway in idiki district so uh, this is the whole uh, idiki district and uh, uh, landsat image is overlaid uh, in the uh, area so we can easily know the location what is there uh, timely updation can be done and uh, with this uh this uh, i will uh, tell you this is the this green line is the uh, proposed hill highway and uh, this red uh, white line is the continuation to the north and south side so idiki district being a landslide hazard area prone area uh, before fixing the alignment we need to no which uh, the uh, present roads are if the present roads are going through uh, landslide zones we need to uh, change the alignment so for designing that kind of roads and infrastructures we are using gis 3d capabilities here uh, it is the anamudi peak the highest point in western ghat we can see idiki reservoir here mullaperiyar reservoir here so while i click on this uh, road or the green line i can know whether it is a landslide zone a zone or see this is a medium hazard zone landslide zone and the uh, road is uh, part of nh 220 and uh, some other area see this this is the type of road is ndmm concrete road and it is not a landslide hazard zone this is a medium hazard zone now so th this is uh, by using 3d functionality we can uh, know the area the terrain of the area and at a, uh, the uh, with the help of attributes we can know what is uh, there like is there any landslide or uh, is it in the proximity of a ecologically sensitive area or a forest land like that uh, by using gis we can know the, uh, all this kind of stuff so these are the softwares used for uh, gis there are so many open source software and proprietary commercial software uh, i have ma made so many maps or i am showing so many maps uh, uh, in made in open source software because uh, it is easily available downloadable freely downloadable 
and the proprietary GIS softwares are highly expensive normally. Uh, so quantum GIS, uh, QGIS uh, is widely used and uh, for specific purposes, for uh, water sources purposes or for infrastructure purposes, this uh, GIS, uh, so we need not uh, uh, learn all these softwares. Uh, ArcGIS is having most of the functionalities uh, with GIS and uh, each of these softwares is uh, used for various mapping purposes. So coming to remote sensing. Remote sensing, uh, when you say about remote sensing first, uh, I will relate it to the GIS because uh, when we are using GIS, we need to capture the features from us. So how the features of Earth are captured? For a large area, we cannot go and uh, survey uh, with a dummy level or a theodolite light or a, even a total session, we cannot go with uh, the instrument and uh, survey the, a large area. If, if it is a district or uh, panjayat or a state or even a country. So we use remote sensing for capturing the earth features from uh, for uh, GIS purposes. So this is the definition of uh, remote sensing, the science and art of acquisition of information of an object or phenomenon without making physical contact with it. That is the uh, uh, important part, without making physical contact with it. Actually, uh, by using a satellite or a drone or a uh, LiDAR scanner, we are not making physical contact with the uh, feature of our surface. And uh, I think uh, these all things uh, you have learned in your uh, sixth semester geomatics uh, uh, subject and uh, this is uh, the electromagnetic spectrum so I have shown uh, given this video for getting a uh, knowledge about the uh, depth of or breadth of wavelength see this uh, radio meter, uh, radio wavelength radio band is having some 10 raised to 3 that is 1 kilometer length and the other visible range is having 0.5 into 10 raised to minus 6. So this is the width of wavelength used in our uh, remote sensing, like uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum. And we are using these wavelengths for remote sensing purposes. And remote sensing is of active and passive remote sensing. Active remote sensing, active remote sensing is uh, 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 the object, the scanner will be uh, radiating pulses, uh, energy, and it will be uh, the code radiations will be captured uh, by the scanner. So uh, the type of active remote sensing we are using is uh, LiDAR, light detection and raging, which uses uh, laser pulses. This is a terrestrial LiDAR scanner. And uh, this is a LiDAR scanner uh, which is fixed in uh, copters or uh, drones. And uh, this is the output of a LiDAR point cloud. We will discuss it later. And uh, the next thing is GPR, ground penetrating radar. So ground penetrating radar uh, is used for getting knowledge about uh, hidden objects underneath the ground, if this is our project area, and uh, I need to know whether there are any pipelines or utilities uh, constructed uh, before. So uh, we, we can use GPR, and uh, th this is the output of GPR. And another uh, active remote sensing method is using rad radar, synthetic aperture radar. This is for getting finer resolution images. When using satellite images, we are getting uh, up to, uh, to 2.3 meter resolution or uh, from 30 meters resolution, Landsat image is 30 meter resolution. So here are uh, synthetic and it is uh, the finer resolution satellite images are very costly. So we can use uh, synthetic aperture radar and various types of synthetic aperture radar are uh, shown here. 
and this is the output of a synthetic aperture radar a digital elevation model uh, used for earthquake mapping overlaid on google earth software and coming to passive remote sensing aerial photography is a uh, method this is an example for aerial photograph we are using drones for uh, getting the images and uh, uh, forward looking infrared images are there this is uh, we have seen during covid we have seen for uh, getting the temperature of human body we are using this kind of camera so uh, this is also used for uh, this is also a part of remote sensing uh, geodetic surveying it is nothing but uh, total station and uh, dgps uh, which uses uh, electromagnetic spectrum for uh, communication with the satellite and uh, now multi spectral imaging multi spectral imaging is nothing but uh, we are using different spectral or different bands uh, of scanner a scanner will be uh, uh, capturing different bands from the earth surface and in, in multi spectral imaging the earth surface uh, the some 3 to 20 bands are being captured and this is an example of a landsat thematic mapper image here we can see uh, rivers and this area is not that much visible and the next image this is a little bit more uh, visible now the band 3 the rivers uh, and this land is visible and in the band 4 here the rivers are not that much visible but uh, this area of the uh, mountain mountainous area is uh, more visible having good contrast so this is the use of uh, this is the advantage of using multispectral imaging or hyperspectral imaging hyperspectral images will be having more than 100 uh, spectrums and this is the various spectrums we are getting from a hyperspectral imaging and long wave and short wave infrared uh, this is an output of uh, these are uh, uh, thermal scanners we are using as infrared uh, emitted from uh, thermal scanners this oblique aerial and ground visible band is uh, we are using the visible band of uh, image uh, electromagnetic spectrum and here uh, we can see a stereo satellite imager earlier days we are, we are using uh, stereo pairs for getting uh, the 3d visualization purposes and uh, we will use a stereoscope for uh, seeing these uh, images in 3d so these are or uh, overlapped images uh, taken from uh, satellite so uh, from different angles so th this can be used no this can be used uh, for getting a 3d visualization purposes and uh, that is all about uh, remote sensing and the softwares used are uh, in remote sensing also there are so many open source softwares but uh, most of the gis softwares will be having toolboxes for uh, doing image analysis and uh, the proprietary and commercial software are uh, the widely used to on our micro station terrascan erdas imagine for satellite image analysis this nv is for uh, hyperspectral imaging and for specific purpose this google earth we are all are using google earth for uh, getting information on our purpose and the next question is satellite navigation system a satellite navigation system we will say generally gps but its original name is satellite navigation system this is a system that uses satellites to provide autonomous geospatial positioning uh, it allows uh, the electronic receivers or dgps receivers or handheld receivers to determine the location that is longitude latitude and elevation to high precision uh, using dgps we will get uh, some one one centimeter accuracy and it is widely used for land surveying nowadays 
uses a uh, satellite navigation systems uh, uses are this position navigation and timing positioning means for land surveying we need to uh, get the exact position of uh, boundaries navigation means uh, we are uh, we have to move when uh, we are using uh, gps in our mobile for uh, moving to different places and timing this satellite is having a high position atomic clock so uh, the timing time is also a parameter in gps x y z and time are the parameters used in gps a satellite navigation system with global coverage may be termed as global navigation satellite system so this is a uh, image of uh, visible satellite like uh, from a point a minimum of six satellite to 10 satellites will be uh, uh, visible at a time a minimum of four satellites is required to uh, precisely locate a point on earth because we are having four unknown parameters x y z and type so uh, here we are getting more satellite means uh, we are getting high accuracy so the orbital height is 20000 kilometers from earth surface and these are the major gps satellite systems uh, global position system is of uh, america glonass is for russia uh, galileo bidu uh, for european union and china japan and uh, this is our uh, satellite system navic means uh, the name came from the term navic and we will say in malayalam so uh, navic is indian regional navigation satellite system and it is having some uh, the gps is having 24 satellites and uh, operational satellites and uh, indian regional navigation system is not fully operational as of now uh, only seven satellite uh, we have launched as of now and uh, uh, the total constellation is 11 satellites so uh, only the region near india india and some 1500 kilometers from india will be uh visible or uh, the image from these areas or position from these areas will be getting from uh, our indian navigational uh, satellite system and coming to photogrammetry it is the science of making measurements from photographs uh, the input of photogrammetry is for photographs actually so photographs aerial photographs are inputted as, uh, this is uh, taken using some aircraft or uh, drones and this overlap uh, with uh, use of overlap the photograph as uh, stereo satellite images we can uh, like stereo satellite images we can uh, make 3d imaging or ortho photos from photographs this is uh, some area of uh, a road and uh, from photogrammetry the output of uh, uh, this is an ortho photo so from this the cad data is being prepared using photogrammetry the output is typically a map or drawing or point cloud so i have earlier said we will discuss in detail about point cloud the point cloud is this is a point cloud point cloud is a set of data points in space this each point is having an x y and z values so uh, we can uh, measure or uh, in a 3d uh, imaging we can measure the height of building or height of tree etc this is the point cloud uh, using a aerial uh, imaging and uh, this is uh, for an urban area so all the trees and uh, uh, the buildings everything can be seen these are a set of points so having x y z values and uh, when coming to photogrammetric methods there are aerial photogrammetry and terrestrial photogrammetry so fixed wing manned aircraft are used for photogrammetry uh, humans will be there in the aircraft now for uh, unmanned aerial vehicles is uh like fixed wing are there uh now for photogrammetry purposes nowadays we are using drone May, mainly drones are used for photogrammetric purposes uh the surveying 
purpose for uh, agricultural purposes and uh, for construction purposes everything we are u- using drones and the rescue camera is nothing but camera fixed at ground using tripods or poles and handheld camera so these are the softwares used for photogrammetry 64d trimble info these are the main softwares imagine photogrammetry these are the main softwares widely used for uh, photogrammetry and there are some open source softwares also and coming to cartography this is uh, cartography actually uh, is uh, the base of uh, this geospatial layer. the final output will be maps whether it is a cloud map or a uh, 2d map or a 3d map uh, so we need to know something about cartography so i i just put this uh, session to show you some map uh, this is a road map of kerala and the there are some fundamental uses of cartography map design generalization map projections uh, so uh, this when a uh, ellipsoid surface is projected to a plane surface uh, we need some projections to accurately measure uh, or accurately without distortion we need to get the area so the area of interest will be uh, putting tangential to this uh, plane which uh, whether it is conical or uh, cylindrical the this this the tangential area will be having uh, the correct uh, measurements and uh, when we go uh, away from this area the distortions will be more so map projections are very important in gis i am not going to much detail uh, map editing is their labeling labeling map labeling is their symbology is important these are uh, some symbology so we cannot write everything in the in a map so we use symbologies and the symbology is important in cartography and this is a uh, map for hot uh, hotspot analysis map of crime mapping so for some uh, real estate purposes when i am going to uh, buy a house i need to know whether this place is safe or uh, is there any cases of uh, thirst frequent uh, theft there so uh, we are preparing crime analysis hotspots map uh, uh, in india actually not uh, it is not available for every state but in uh, usa and canada this is a major concern for in the real estate industry and this is a land use land cover map of uh, delhi area here each each classes land use classes are uh, symbolized here and uh, from image analysis we can easily uh, classify using image analysis we can uh, easily classify uh, this land use and land cover this is uh, used for urban planning purposes and uh, this is a hotspot map of uh, accident locations in uh, malappuram district kerala so uh, by seeing this map we can easily get to know about where the accident are seen actually this is a 2d map when we give it to a cloud platform or uh, like google map we can easily use it like uh, our, with uh, giving our location my uh, like my location i can see where while i was tra- uh, while I, i am traveling i can easily know whether this is a accident for uh, uh, hotspot or a safe zone that is the uh, concepts of uh, geospatial technology and uh, coming to it, uh, actually it may be boring to you because uh, it is more like a lecture and uh, coming to this uh, geospatial technology application in civil engineer here i have uh, this uh, the total station uses edm electronic distance measurement and uh, for land surveying we are using dgps uh, which uses gps satellites uh, for measuring and uh, this uh, land surveying we are using uas for photogrammetry purposes i will show you one video about, uh, regarding this land survey so geospatial technologies are used because uh, for uh, 
using a drone or a aircraft the location is important uh, gps these are using gps coordinates and uh, uh, the final output of this uh, map is uh, this uh, survey is like uh, see this is a ortho photo now uh, dsm detail surface model is uh, prepared using uh, these maps and detail elevation models can be used so these are the applications in surveying and uh, i'll show you some other video actually uh, the sound is not working because of uh, screen sharing uh, this is a drone flight path and uh, using drone this uh, data can be captured and this is the output of uh, drone uh, drone uh, survey this uses lidar and photogrammetry both in this survey and uh, this is uh, used uh, using 3d survey software and uh, see now uh, this is the part where i, I want to uh, show you because uh, here see using lidar lidar uses uh, laser so using lidar uh, there are five signals for uh, lidar five receptions so after a survey we can get the bare earth models without any trees or uh, the, if there is a building here actually there is a building see there are buildings here and uh, trees and uh, vegetation here so uh, by using lidar we can get to know the uh, bare earth model if there was no building or a land uh, how the surface will be and uh, this is required for construction planning because if we need to uh, how this land will be looking like uh, if we demolish these buildings or uh, building a, a bridge or uh, something like that or uh, for developing this land so we need to know how this terrain will be looking like without any uh, buildings or trees uh, for archaeological purposes also it is used so this is the output of uh, a lidar and uh, another some other functionality is we can know the profiling profiling details uh, of a, uh, this is uh, if we draw a line here this much profile for uh, calculating cut and fill volume uh, like that we can get the terrain's profile land profile in a distance of this see here uh, we are getting it in uh, 30 meters uh, interval so this this is uh, the uses of uh, remote sensing in uh, land survey so this is a uh, terrestrial lidar scanner and this is the output this is not an animated video <laughs> this is uh, the output Uh, received from this lidar so this can be used for uh, infrastructure management infrastructure uh, development everything the initial survey can be done using lidar and uh, this is another use of uh, like corridor mapping for uh, developing road transportation projects we need to uh, survey all this uh, area so uh, the uses when we use remote sensing or this type of technologies the advantage is we can the advantage is we can uh, save time and money here road with width can be extracted depth and width of drains profile of drains every feature civil engineering features we need to develop can be seen so this is a point cloud output of this uh, survey 
and uh, the volume calculation can be easily done of a site this uh, perimeter area volume of uh, this top pails can be easily done using uh, remote sensing technology and uh, the next one is uh, bath the next one is uh, bathymetric surveying so uh, bathymetric survey means uh, the survey of water bodies we are using this drone the water body depth profile can be easily mapped without the evening even uh, seeing the uh, bed of the water body or this lake we can uh, get a 3d profile of this uh, this is the 3d profile of uh, this uh, lake which was surveyed and uh, this is the advantage of using remote sensing technology and uh, for construction uh, site planning uh, applications in construction uh, excavation volume calculation can be done uh, i am not so this uh, the site is being modeled in a 3d profile this volume calculations can be done and uh, planning application planning logistics and using cloud uh, data we can see using augmented reality we can see the area in detail and this is uh, thermal inspections and construction monitoring is another application of geospatial technology in uh, construction so this uh, this is done using a drone see the without going to you if i am going for an inspection here i won't see that uh, honeycombing or this uh, defect here so using a drone the and uh, Uh, the construction progress can be seen easily for management and the safety construction all overall view of the building construction uh, monitoring and uh, the worker safety whether they are uh, using safety ppes like that we can see see here materials are stacked here everything this is uh, used for construction monitoring so now th this is a new age technology of bim and gis integration bim is uh, building information modeling and uh, now uh, large construction companies are using uh, bim technologies before uh, starting pl uh, planning they are making bim, mo BIM models of the uh, area or project so use uh, using bim and gis the location information can also be integrated to gis this is a video uh, explaining how bim and gis is incorporated effectively so our civil engineers uh, after uh, getting graduated or working in a project uh, bim technologies will be essential nowadays and uh, for large type of projects and uh, gis will also be a part of this so bim and gis are working as one nowadays for uh, adding location intelligence and uh, design together so this is one of the applications in uh, construction technology and here in this video also we can see see this is a bim model prepared and uh, we can know what are the uh, features in the neighborhood of this uh, project so 
So this was, explains uh, the different levels of BIM. Actually, there was uh, audio also, but unfortunately, this not hearing. These are the uses of uh, integrating GIS uh, uh, with BIM. And moving on, this uh, urban planning, GIS can be used effectively in urban planning. One of the major uses of uh, GIS is urban planning because urban planning deals with a large extent of area, usually a district or a state. Uh, so uh, GIS, uh, the capacity of GIS to store, manipulate and analyze this uh, data can be effectively used in urban planning. And uh, uh, this is uh, an urban area, which uh, this data, GIS data is overlaid above that. And here, uh, an analysis called over, overlay analysis can be done effectively for uh, GIS mapping. So I will show you a coastal regulation map of We know the recent uh, marine flood demolition. Here, uh, marine municipality can now, uh, for further, if somebody up, uh, applies for an approval, marine municipality can uh, overlay that uh, land parcel. So, our, uh, with the survey data, so survey data are here. Showing here, so uh, 100 meters from the CRS line, 200 meters from the CRS line, like that, uh, it is shown there. So by overlaying our uh, data, uh, like uh, when I am uh, applying for an approval, I need to give the DGPS locations also. Now for airport authority and NOCs, we are giving uh, DGPS locations. So. Uh, like that for this coastal area regulation zones also uh, for getting uh, approvals we need to uh, give the dgps locations of our uh, land extent or the boundaries uh, location so the municipality engineers can overlay that above this uh, map uh, this is a pdf actually this map will be available in gis and they can easily know which zone it, it comes or uh, this building can be permitted or not, like that. And uh, the multi-layer features, um, uh, actually this uh, for uh, high flood frequency. So uh, for urban planners, the flood prone area shall be, you know, we have seen two floods in the last two years. So we know the uh, situation of uh, if we are uh, going to buy a land parcel uh, in a uh, flood, high flood frequency area, or uh, th this this is a prime requirement. So using GIS maps, uh, urban planners can easily uh, relocate the settlements right now. And uh, uh, for th these are the other some of the features of uh, GIS in urban planning. So uh, here land use land cover area uh, for, with the help of uh, remote sensing image analysis, uh, we can easily the day by day changes actually, uh, we, we can use the satellite images and even if uh, you can simply take Google Earth and uh, you can get location uh, historical data. So we can know the changes in land use and land cover in a faster pace uh, by using GIS. And in environment engineering, water quality uh, uh, analysis uh, is there. This is a uh, map of EDQ district distribution of total dissolved solids and uh, pH values in, of groundwater in EDQ district. So this is done using uh, interpolation techniques in GIS. And the urban water supply scheme, this is the, uh, uh, I have shown you earlier of a lovely GP. Like that in RGS uh, for an urban uh, area, 
the position of walls the end households the main pipelines the uh, attributes of this the major maps this can be used uh, for uh, water supply and sewer analysis so uh, here i will show you an interesting video uh, which uh, augmented reality is connected with gis see the gis data is made into augmented reality the engineer can go to site and know what is uh, beneath the surface which pipelines where is the manholes which pipelines are going through uh, this people uh, this uh, places so uh, the engineers can know where it is located using uh, gps and rtk techniques see this is the augmented reality of uh, an ur fully placed urban area so the pipelines are here and it uh, using augmented reality we can uh, use uh, tablets or uh, even mobile phones to see all the features in the database as a reality one so this is the pipeline we can see about the road actually these pipelines are going beneath or uh, is going to be implemented in this area so how it will be like if there are any clashes if i am going to uh, implement this or put this pipeline here if uh, there is some clashes or some other utilities crossing this road everything can be known using this uh, augmented reality and gis so the when we walk near to this point the dimensions the features everything will be shown in our uh, tablet screen now air quality monitoring is uh, air quality monitoring map is here uh, this is an updated map of uh, trivandrum kariyattam trivandrum so this is a cloud map uh, this is a dashboard of air quality map and we can see this is uh, friday update that uh, 7 pm one hour uh, two two hour ago so this is the use of uh, gis in air quality mapping and mining earthquake studies everything i have uh, given some uh, dashboards here to show you but uh, i think uh, our time is already over uh, this is uh, gis uses in surface water hydrologic modeling uh, we can uh, use the catchment delineation techniques for uh, watershed delineation technique for uh, getting the runoff Uh, and uh, this is a video showing from a dam we can uh, delineate the catchment and streams using gis so see the uh, streams are automatically delineated from a uh, digital elevation model using uh, gis techniques these are uh, the uh, there are there is a hydrology toolbox here so these are the tools we are using for uh, delineation of watershed and groundwater modeling it can use flood plain management uh, visualization can be improved here uh, this is a short video in 36 seconds see this is a uh, flood plain or uh, this when a flood comes to this area we can easily know how the flood will affect uh, up to what extent the flood will affect this is a simulation flood simulation uh, made using arc scene so these are the applications of uh, gis and geospatial technology in uh, water resource engineering and reservoir volume can be calculated canal alignment design can be uh, done using these technologies and transportation planning highway asset management this transportation engineering we are using the simple use of uh, gis
use in we all use every day gis uh, google maps we are using so highway asset management uh, system is there highway operations uh, management and maintenance highway construction management transportation safety and i have shown you a map of uh, accident hotspot analysis so this kind of uh, functionality is used for uh, transportation engineering and uh, for geotechnical engineering uh, soil mapping and creating soil database like uh, standard penetration test results uh, here this is a map of soil types so uh, at which depth sand is available clay is available and uh, which borehole it is this uh, data is interpolated here and uh, the spt values of the n values are given here in uh, each soil type for each for each area the spt values are given so so moving to next section this is the career options so this will be <laughs> you all will be interested in this section actually geospatial techniques uh, careers in gis is there remote sensing is there and uh, lidar and gps technology is there so coming to gis uh, Uh, this triangle will describe uh, the career options like a ga scientist uh, who is uh, having a uh, in a phd level uh, who is developing gas uh, applications or uh, gas algorithms uh, they will be developing or research uh, they are uh, researching uh, this after ramta current uh, taking phd uh, you you can work as a ga scientist and uh, ga specialist or experts are uh, having uh, they are carrying out or uh, they are in will be charge of uh, the entire project and ga professional or consultant will be working a, in ga softwares and they will be uh, working as uh, decision makers so and ga analyst technician will be using softwares for uh, different analysis and they will be giving output uh, map outputs for uh, to this uh, people and uh, that's their function ga technician will be uh, map editors they will be capturing data and editing uh, they are they will be editing so for a ga analyst here see the depth of expertise will be more uh, domain exp uh, domain knowledge shall be more and coming to this ga uh, technician uh, the domain uh, we need to know the software you know in the in depth use of uh, or technology of gas may not be uh, useful but uh, here Uh, and the mis expert and geo special uh, this gs web application developer is uh, now this this job opportunity is for uh, somebody is having programming background so if uh, some of you may have uh, taken civil engineering and you uh, you will be having programming uh, skills so uh, this is the right choice for you here for gis web and application developer mis expert will uh, with the gis uh, is like gis uh, dashboards and maps will be there management information uh, system expert this one mis is management information system so he will be uh, taking outputs from the gis data and uh, uh, he will be giving uh, the data to uh, uh, the high ups and uh, your special training and coaching is some other industry nowadays uh, which is developing uh, because uh, the need of gas personnel in the industry is uh, becoming very much uh, more so uh, training and coaching centers are there and remote sensing scientist also is uh, will be in a uh, phd level uh, research uh, scientist and uh, these are all are remote, remote sensing uh, software uh, i mean image analyst is uh, making maps or extracting features from uh, the remote sensing images and uh, photogrammetry engineer will be using drones 
uh, like this uh, drones or photogrammetry aircraft they will be taking uh, photographs and they they will be analyzing and uh, making outputs from uh, the photogrammetric process and photogrammetric quality analysis is uh, the output shall be checked for the quality the client will be needing uh, a specific quality output so a quality analysis uh, job is to uh, check the quality uh, before going it to the client the output so uh, lidar radar quality analyst also doing that lidar engineer is uh, he will be in charge of the lidar surveying project mapping and lidar processing as uh, analyst will be doing the analysis uh, uh, analysis and processing of the surveyed data lidar technician will be uh, doing this all are civil engineers uh, actually this should be a basic skill for uh, lidar or dgps surveyor in the forthcoming uh, age uh, this 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 will be a uh, this should be a or uh, we should have a basic skill of this uh, surveying technique uh, basic knowledge because in every uh, project it will be used uh, for surveying remote sensing uh, technology will be used and uh, we should uh, have a basic knowledge of all these technologies uh, because when we are working as engineers we need to uh, uh, manage people working under us so then we need to know a basic idea about this technology so these are the courses uh, available uh, today after btech actually uh, be and btech ge informatics is available in india uh, and after btech civil engineering uh, mtech is an option msc ge informatics is there pg diploma courses are there these are an institute in the institute of remote sensing is uh, at uh, daradun uh, it's uh, uh, it's under isro so uh, they are having uh, all the remote sensing uh, mtech courses and uh, msc geo informatics is there pg diploma remote sensing and gis is there advanced diploma in land surveying technology is there then uh, these are uh, after civil engineering these certified gis professional certified total session professional like these courses are for uh, as a for going to a job uh, for directly getting into industry you can do this type of course of this pg diploma the, uh, the the from pg diploma to this certified cad professional these type of courses you can directly get into the industry and if, uh, if you want to uh, in the continuing uh, education so you you should opt uh, msc geo informatics or uh, mtech in remote sensing geo informatics geo science or satellite imagery or certain photogrammetry is there so uh, that is the career geo special courses and uh, now if you have any uh, doubts or concerns questions hello thank you yeah. sir So now we can move on to the doubt clearing section. So hmm. the first question is, what are some common challenges and their solutions when designing or implementing a geo database? The common challenges uh, I have faced is like uh, the non-availability of uh, data. Like uh, if the satellite images are uh, actually the high accuracy satellite images are high resolution satellite images are. Uh, very costly so we need to uh, uh, satisfy with uh, some 30 meter resolution data and gps data now in, uh, i am talking uh, in uh, regarding kerala because uh, this uh, data acquisition and uh, this data will be available uh, no uh, will be available in different departments but uh, getting this coordinated will be a very so when we are uh, doing a project uh, the preparation of geo database uh, the data uh, collection is the common challenge thank you sir 
So the next question is, what is the role of IoT, Internet of Things, in GIS? Internet of Things uh, means uh, this is uh, that's why I uh, talked about uh, location intelligence. So nowadays, Internet of Things, this uh, uh, we are using uh, smartphones. Uh, uh, this uh, everything is using uh, location intelligence. So uh, the basic uh, nowadays we are talking about big data analysis. Everything is uh, uh, based on location intelligence, and uh, this uh, GIS is the pro uh, uh, working in the back end of all these uh, technologies. Okay, okay, sir. The next is blockchain and geospatial industry. How would you combine them together? Uh, sorry, sorry. Blockchain and geospatial industry. How would you combine them together? Actually, I am, uh, I am not uh, in I mean, uh, that I haven't think, uh, thought about uh, combination of both of that. <laughs> I will refer it and I will give you an answer. Okay, okay, sir. So the next question is, what are the free softwares for doing spatial analysis? Uh, free software? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Free, free, you ask for uh, open source software? Yeah. Uh, open, uh, open source software, sir, uh, this QGIS is having uh, so many plugins. Uh, the, that is the uh, nowadays, I mean, uh, number one software used for spatial analysis. Uh, you can use QGIS for uh, your project purposes and all. And it will be having, you have to search for plugins. Okay, sir. Hello? Questions of GIS in water source engineering. Hello? Hello? Could huh. you hear me? Huh. Sir, please explain some applications of GIS in water resource engineering. In water resource engineering, uh, first application is water supply engineering. For urban water supply, I have shown you uh, a video uh, about uh, augmented reality and uh, urban water supply. Now, uh, the uh, second one is now water supply schemes are implementing SCADA systems. So, SCADA systems is using GIS for uh, the implementation and operation of uh, water supply schemes. Now, uh, the, uh, some other application is in groundwater uh, analysis. Groundwater uh, potential maps uh, can be made through uh, GIS analysis uh, for a specific area uh, of area of interest. We can uh, know the groundwater prospect maps. And uh, the other application is uh, this uh, surface water modeling. Actually, FWM softwares are available. Uh, plugins are available in QGIS and uh, RGS also. So, surface water modeling, the runoff, uh, catchment uh, delineation, uh, the floodplain mapping, that type of applications are used in water resources. Okay, sir. Could you kindly say some applications of GIS in town planning? Town planning that uh, I have, town planning is uh, urban planning, actually, uh, that's, uh, I have shown you the, uh, see, uh, here, in urban planning, uh, the urban database, uh, the, see, here, uh, this, this urban area can be made to a geo database and uh, all for, for developing purposes. Uh, this GIS can be used for overlay uh, analysis, can be used for uh, giving approvals or, uh, or whether the urban area or development. Because uh, for urban sprawl, 
we need to know uh, where uh, whether it is uh, in a uh, uh, ecologically sensitive area or a, a near to a forest uh, buffer uh, there will be a buffer uh, area for every forest uh, reserve forest area of, uh, some 2 uh, kilometers or 5 kilometers so when the, when we are uh, planning a uh, urban development or uh, a new settlement we need to take into consideration uh, all these uh, uh, regulations Uh, like coastal regulation will be there airport authorities regulations will be there uh, so the, by preparing a gis database uh, the uh, already what is there we can know and what shall be done with the current regulations can be known okay sir the last query is what are the drawbacks of using cracked version of gis Uh, actually uh, there are so many drawbacks uh, the main thing is when we are doing uh, some uh, analysis it will crash uh, and it will take more time because uh, i have used the rgs uh, original version when i was working in kisbi and uh, i have used the uh, cracked version when i am studying uh, for mtech so uh, the main thing is uh, it will be uh, uh, it will when when we do some analysis or uh, uh, it will crash that that's the first thing now the second thing is uh, it will be having uh, limited functionality the crack, crack version even if uh, there will be some uh, uh, all the toolboxes will be there but uh, all features of the toolboxes will not be available uh, for our application purpose so when we are doing a project or uh, we need to we will be uh, forced to use uh, some other applications or other plugins to use that analysis that's the main drawbacks hope you have covered almost all the relevant questions we would like to express our sincere gratitude to chichu sir for taking such an excellent webinar session thank you all for your participation we will be back in next webinar on 5th june follow up our webinar series and let's together thank you so much okay thank you